Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, we are going to be using OpenAI's Vision API to send OpenAI images and then ask what is inside those images. So OpenAI recently released their Vision API. So what the Vision API allows you to do is it allows you to submit an image to OpenAI and then make a prompt. So basically with that prompt, you can do whatever it is that you want to do, just like with Dolly or just like with chat completion. Uh, so we have this image here of a buddy of mine uh, coding at a bar during one of our little pub hack sessions. And basically what I did is I put three requests up to OpenAI with this image. And the first one I said is give me a caption for this image. So it says man enjoys coding at a vibrant cafe. Then for taxonomy purposes, I say give me tags, CSV format, comma separated value format for this image. And so man, laptop, smiling, indoors, casual clothing, working, cafe, table, long hair, and technology. Right? So it tags the image for me. And then finally I say give me a full description of this image you know, for whatever purposes that I might want. And so it says, in the image, we see a smiling individual with long hair tied back and a lone po low ponytail. So it can even detect a low ponytail, right? Sitting at a wooden table and using a laptop. So the very interesting part about this is I put these prompts in, again, just like I would with Dolly or just like I did with chat, and I am able to be a lot more freeform with this uh, OpenAI Vision API than I would other Vision APIs that are out there. Many other Vision APIs are very good, but they're very specific. They'll essentially give you tags or they'll tell you how many people are in an image. Like, they're very good at exactly what they do, but they're not freeform. You submit the image and they'll give you something back. They'll give you exactly what they want to give back. The cool part about this is you can just make the prompt. Uh, so basically what uh, I did is I created uh, this uh, script in order to create a gallery. Uh, then I submitted images to basically be scanned by the script that was created. And so we can see here these different captions. Serene twilight at a grand estate, building fountain, palm tree, sunset. This image shows a large ornate building with structural uh, architecture elements. Uh, cans, uh, assortment of quirky canned soups, canned foods, blase, blase, blase. Uh, so basically, uh, this is the type of thing that we're going to be building today. Uh, and it's really cool because it, again, it allows you to submit these images and be able to, to basically make the types of requests that you actually care about. So let me show you how this project works. So basically with this project, there are three different components. First, there are the images. So the images have to come from somewhere. So they are going to come from my own photo gallery. I'm going to dump them into a folder and that is where they're going to be processed from. And then I have a processing script. So basically I have a script that goes through. It detects any images that are not currently in the database. So I use a SQLite database because I love my SQLite right now. I have a SQLite database Basically, when an image gets processed, its name, the description, all that information gets dumped in the database. Uh, so that script goes through. If the image is in the database, it skips it. If not, it goes through and processes the image. And then finally, we have the third component, which is a bottle script. So again, bottle is a micro web app framework. Again, one of the things that I like in Python right now, which allows you to basically create a web application very quickly and actually run that web application directly from the script. And that is then going to go to that SQLite database, grab the records in the database in order to create uh, the gallery that we're taking a look at. So uh, if I just do uh, shrink these a little bit, again, you can kind of get an idea here. And this is just a brief demonstration to show how this works. So again, we have a squirrel at squirrel's pizza party in the garden. Squirrel eating wooden railing nature, outdoors wildlife trees. Uh, I don't know, some kind of boutique or whatever, elegant attire in a classic menswear boutique. And we can see we have these different images here. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to go over here and we're going to look at my pictures uh, from a Venice uh, vacation that I took a little while ago. And so, I don't know, let's see here. Let me, uh, I'm gonna select that image there and select a cruise ship image, right? So I'm gonna do that. And I'm going to do command to do this cruise ship image, just so we know what's going on. Then we're going to do it, go up to here. I'm going to do file. 
We're going to export two images. We're going to put them in PNG. So that's going to come up later. I'm just dealing with PNG files now. You can do it with PNG. You can do it with JPEG files. Um, but we're doing PNG right now. Then it's going to ask me where to save. And basically, I have a folder. So I have my projects folder where I do all my projects for these classes. In there, I have an OpenAI Vision upload folder. So that's this particular project. And inside that, we have a static folder. So whenever you're using uh, Python uh, web app frameworks, you're generally going to have a static folder for any static files, CSS files, image files, any files that you're going to be uh, presenting on a web page, you're generally going to be in a static folder. Uh, so that is where I will dump these particular images. So I'm going to export here. And it'll take half a second or so, and it should be exported. From there, we're going to go to the vision process script. So vision process script, let me uh, increase the size of this a little bit. Um, basically, with this script, what this script is going to do is we have the open AI key here. And what's going to happen is it's going to search for everything within the static folder. So all images in the static folder. It is then going to put that into a list. It is going to go through that list. And basically, if the image, if the file in that folder has a PNG in it, it's then going to go through. It's going to see whether that uh, image with its information is already in the database. If not, it's going to process the image and insert that into the database. So if we do this, I'm going to simply hit the Run button here. And so now it's going through and it's running. So the first image that I've found is uh, most likely one that's not already in the database. So it's taking a second. Might have to do my little dance here. That is one thing with OpenAI, you know, it's, it takes a second. Again, and this is an important thing to, to understand with any of these kinds of these systems is like how long it takes. If you need to process 10,000 images and it takes you, you know, 20 seconds per image, how long is that going to take you? Something to think about. Uh, so there we go. Okay, so basically anything that's already in the database just shows up here, just prints out on the screen, says already in the database. And then just for troubleshooting purposes, I have this here um, where it says, okay, added image 5409 PNG, cruise ship go to by, gu guided by tugboats at sea. And it gives a description. Uh, then image, uh, 5400, Venetian skyline. So it knew it was Venice, Venetian skyline with serene water transit. Here's our tags, and then here's our description. Let me close that. Then we'll go to the vision gallery script. So this is the bottle script. So this is what creates the web application. We are simply going to run this. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. Everything seems to have worked uh, fine. And then we go here. Again, this is our web application. I hit refresh, and now we can see. So I have my Venetian skyline here. So Venetian skyline with serene water transit. So some boats, right? Venice, Italy, Grand Canal, boats, blah, blah, blah. Doge's Palace, water, architecture, skyline, travel. And again, the interesting thing about this with, again, the open AI vision is that it knows it's Venice, obviously Italy, but Grand Canal, Doge's Palace, it knows all of that kind of stuff. Uh, this image depicts a serene view of a waterway, blase, blase, blase. And if we come down here, cruise ship guided by tugboats at sea, cruise ship tugboat sea, and then it gives a description of the image. So this can be very useful for you. Imagine you're with a company or organization, and over the past 20 years, you have been taking just a crap ton of digital images, right? You know, you have your employees out there, you have everybody out there, they're taking pictures, and it all get, gets dumped into a folder somewhere. And one of the big problems that you're going to have is an issue of like taxonomy. So taxonomy is how you search for files. Uh, and basically, it's things like tags. So if you want to see everything that has an ocean in it, or if you want to see everything that has a dog in it, if you want to see everything that has a brown dog in it, that type of thing, basically, this is the kind of taxonomy that you're going to search off of. Remember, in the computer world, most of the stuff coders deal with, realistically, is text, right? So it's very, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to have machine vision look at this and turn it into text. This is difficult. <laughs> Searching text? Not difficult. Incredibly easy to do. So what we try to do with these kinds of APIs, whether it's vision, whether it's voice, whatever else, is we try to take this 
send it to somebody else who's smarter than us to give us a return of text, and then we write our code based off of this type of text. So again, if you have a lot of image files, that type of thing, if you're trying to search through files in order to you know, find uh, certain types of information, that type of deal, that's one of the cool things that you can use this OpenAI Vision API for. And again, the nice part is, as I'll show you in the code, uh, these, these prompts are very free form, so you can get specific about whatever it is your particular product or solution or organization needs. So now let's take a moment to take a look at my favorite subject, you know, with all these classes anymore, architecture. This is where we get into the system stuff. Because at the end of the day, once an MCSE, always an MCSE. So anyways, whenever you're thinking about this project, you do need to think about these subsystems and how they all work together. Again, we're using the OpenAI Vision API. It's very important to understand in service-oriented architecture, that particular API might get swapped out in the future if a better API comes out. That's one of the important things with SOA. The idea is you build the system and then when another vendor comes out with a superior product, all you do is you, you know, modify 10 lines of code and all of a sudden you're using the different product in instead of the one that you were using before, right? The other thing, again, when we talk about databases or data stores, where we're storing uh, the data for this particular project, it what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using SQLite. So SQLite is a very easy to use and maintain a database system. Uh, the, basically, it's as easy to use as a text file, but gives you all of the, uh, the SQL components that you want out of a relational database. But the important thing to understand with that is you could swap that out with Postgres or MySQL or Aurora or something else, right? That's just a simply a, a component there. Again, we're using the Bottle web app framework. If you're gonna be using, you know, you need something more robust, you could use Django or, you know, whatever else. So that's one of the reasons why I talk about this architecture thing is once you understand the different components that come together to build an overall solution, then you start can start coming in and basically, you know, cutting out the components that you don't like and pasting the ones in uh, that will, you know, solve your particular problem. So basically with this, uh, we have our box. Uh, we have our box and on our box, we have Python, right? So that's the main uh, thing. So this server, again, I have a MacBook Pro here. Uh, so this is my, my quote unquote server for this, right? Uh, so in this, uh, we have a folder. Uh, so all the scripts and all the files are in the folder. And within that folder is a folder called static, right? So basically the static folder that we have is a folder that contains all of the images, all of the pictures. Again, Again, from an architecture standpoint, that could be anywhere. You could have this on an Amazon bucket somewhere. You could have this in a digital ocean container somewhere. I just literally have this in the folder uh, because that is easier uh, for me to deal with. Uh, so here, uh, basically we have this script and the first script we have is the process script, right? So what the process script is gonna do is it's going to go into the image file uh, folder. It's going to uh, take all of the names for the images in there, put that into a list and then go through and try to process, right? So the first thing that it's gonna do is it's going to st scan this static folder and again, put everything into a list. It is important to understand, it's actually going to put every single file in there into a list. And so we do need uh, to say which files are actually images and which aren't. Basically from here, uh, what we do uh, is we have an if statement and with the if statement basically says if PNG, is in the file, and then we're going to go through and actually take a look at that file. If not, we're gonna chuck it. So if it's an INI file, if it's something else, a .doc file, .txt file, we don't care about that. We definitely don't wanna send that up to OpenAI. So if there is PNG, well, we're gonna go and do something with it. From there, basically what's going to happen is we're going to do a select statement from our database, right? So this is where we have our SQL a light database, and that stores uh, all of the records within a table. And so what we're gonna say is this image that we're currently looking at, is it in that SQLite database or is it in the database that we're dealing with? If it is, we're just gonna skip it because it's already there. If it's not, then we're going to go through and basically then we're going to send the entire image itself. So we're gonna have this image and it's important to understand for this particular project, we're actually gonna send this entire image to OpenAI. 
to OpenAI. We have to send that image. So we're gonna send that image along with the prompts that we care about, and we're basically gonna ask it, give us a caption, give us tags in CSV format and give us a description, right? We're gonna ask for those things. And then what's gonna happen is OpenAI is going to give us the response. And then for this processing script, it will then dump the image name with the responses into the SQL database so that it can be picked up by basically the, the, the web gallery uh, script that we're going to be running in a second. So this is how the processing works. So we have a static folder with our images in it, our processing script, takes all the images uh, from there, actually all the files from there, goes through, if it's the image type that we're looking for, it detects with it, it, whether it's in the SQL database. If it is, we don't do anything, we skip. If not, we take the image itself, we send it up to OpenAI, and then we get the response back. Now, an important thing to understand here, again, we talk about architecture and systems, is you are, from this, you are going to have to send that image to OpenAI. So one of the things you're gonna have to look at, what are your firewall rules? What are your route routing rules? Again, if, you, if you're in a, in a home environment, right? If you're in a home, small business environment, being able to send an image to OpenAI should be no big deal. You shouldn't have to worry about any kind of network configurations. If you are in a corporate setting, especially if this is some kind of you know, server system under layers of networking, simply being able to send this image file to OpenAI, that might be a bit of an issue. That's why you may use AWS. Right? So your server, your server buried under God knows how many layers of security and networking may have a very difficult time sending your image to OpenAI. On the other hand, if you have your images up on an AWS bucket and you've configured it properly, it may be very easy to basically send an image from AWS to OpenAI. Again, that's the kind of architecture systems thing that you have to be thinking about. Now from there, in order to get the gallery that we have behind me. Uh, basically, I have my other script. Uh, so we have this other script here. This is the bottle script. And so what the bottle script is going to do is when you go to, uh, to root, which is the index route for this. Basically what's going to happen is it's going to go to the SQL database. It's going to get all the records from the SQL database. And then what it's going to do is it's going to create a nice page with the image, with the caption, with the tags, and with the description for each of these. And when the user, right, <laughs> goes to that page, basically this will get all the SQL records. It will write it into a page and voila. And this is what you have. So, architecture. <laughs> it's simple, I swear. But this is the basic concept of how this system works. Now, the first thing before we take a look at the actual code itself is you will have to go to openai.com and actually make sure that you get an API key, right? So the API key, that's the key that allows you to, to do all this stuff, be able to interact with their systems. So you have to go to get your API key. You have to give them a couple of bucks, your credit card information and that type of thing. Uh, once you've done that, uh, you can go to the documentation. Uh, they have different capabilities uh, here. You see the text generation. We've dealt with before, fine tuning to image generation, Dolly 3. And what we care about today is vision, right? Learn how to use GPT-4 to understand images. And basically you go through, you can see currently it's the vision preview uh, and they give you the quick start guide for basically how this works. Um, so you can give a URL. So basically you can just give a URL to an image if it's a public image uh, and make a request. What we're going to be doing today is we're actually gonna be doing uploading base 64 encoded images. So we're actually gonna encode the images in base 64 and then we're going to upload them uh, to OpenAI that way. Uh, one of the warning warnings is apparently if you use URL URLs. So if you use public URLs uh, for the, uh, the images, apparently that does supposedly work a lot faster than actually uploading your images to OpenAI. So that's one of the things that you'll have to be thinking about from like a security and privacy standpoint how you want to deal with that kind of thing. Uh, if we go over and we take a look at the code, uh, basically we have uh, two different skip scripts here. So we have the vision hyphen process script. So this is the script that processes the images. Uh, and then we have the vision gallery script, and that's what gives us that nice little image gallery that I showed you before. Um, I had, to be honest with you, when I was first doing this project, um, I was trying to put the process components in with the gallery component. 
But yeah, it kind of just got slow and bogged down. As you saw when it was going through, when it was processing the images, you know, it takes about 20 seconds, maybe 20 seconds or so uh, per image to process. So if you dump, uh, you know, 50 or 100 images or even five or 10 images uh, into the folder uh, for it, for them to be processed, uh, it may take a while. So if, if you delay the gallery opening up until all the images are processed, your gallery might not open up for an hour or two. <laughs> All right. So the cool part about this is by doing the processing script different than the gallery script, I can actually be processing and have the gallery script open at the same time. So I could be processing 5,000 images and every time it gets processed, it gets dumped in the database, right? But it's a database. So multiple users can use a database at the same time. So as images are added to the database, then if you're in the, 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 the gallery component, basically as soon as every new, new image comes in, you can simply do a refresh and that image will show up if you kind of understand. So basically, this is dumping information in the database. The gallery is pulling information from the database. Two, these two different services can use the database at the same time, so you can have them both working at the same time. Whereas if you put this into, this, into the gallery script, it, it gets... <laughs> it gets a little bad. It gets a little bad. So anyways, if we take a look at this, um, uh, with the modules from OpenAI, import OpenAI. Obviously, we need OpenAI. Import SQLite 3, so we need that for the database. Import OS, import Base64. So we're gonna be encoding the images in Base64, so we need this particular module to be able to upload them. Again, remember, in the programming world, nothing magically happens. You actually have to make it all work. So you can't you can't just say, I want to move file from point A to point B. You gotta figure out how you're gonna do it. So again, that's where you use the Base64. Um, encoding and then import request. Uh, from there, we have the open AI settings. So we have our API key here. Again, this will be deleted by the time you watch this video. And client for open AI uh, is open AI API key equals the API key. Uh, we have the database class here. This is basically the same type of database class we've been using for the last couple of projects. We have a function for path to get what the current uh, current folder path is. We have a function for creating the database. So basically, if the database doesn't exist, then it will, or it, if the database doesn't exist, it will get created. And also, if the table doesn't exist, it'll get created. So here we have create table, if not exist, image table, ID as a primary key, uh, image name as text, caption as text, tag as text, description as text, and finish it. You come down here and you execute, you commit, and you close. Uh, we also have the DB select. So we're going to go through and we're going to see if an image already exists. We're going to use this select statement to see if the image already exists. And when we need to insert image information, this is where we're going to be inserting the image information. And we'll take a look at that a little bit more in a second. Uh, then we have the function for encoding the image. So basically this is where we're gonna send the image path. And so open with image path, uh, read as bits, um, as image file, and then return basically the base64 encoding. So this encodes the image file in base64, and that's what we're gonna be sending up uh, to OpenAI. Then we have the upload and process image. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, and then we have here. So basically these are the ends of the functions. And so the first thing that I call here is database. So the database class dot db create function. So basically this is gonna do, this is going to create the table if the table does not already exist in this database. Um, then we're going to come down here, so add new images to the database. Current directory equals os.path.directoryName, os.path.absolutePathFile. So basically this is going to give me my current directory. Then image list is going to be os.listDirectory current directory slash static. Um, so basically, uh, when you're, again, when you're using um, Bottle, when you're using Django, most of these web app frameworks for Python, you're going to have a folder for static files. Honestly, the folder for static files is not supposed to be on the folder that Bottle or Django is running on for security purposes. This actually should be on some other server. But again, this is a simple project, uh, so we're just using the static folder here. So basically, in our root directory uh, for this script, we have a static folder, and that has all of our images in here. So os.list directory is basically going to list all of the files in the static folder, 
um, in the folder and that currently holds this particular script and that is going to go into an image list. Since that is now a list, we can do for image and image list. So for every value in the image list, if PNG an image. So basically all the, 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 the images I've been putting in there have been .png files. So I'm simply saying if PNG is there, and scan it. That could be a problem, but again, for this type of project, it's easy enough. Um, it's good enough. Uh, if you're going to be dealing with JPEGs, JPGs, or JPEGs, or whatever else, you might you would want to put ORs in here to do like .png or .jpeg or JPEG, JPG, right? That type of thing. Uh, image path uh, equals OS .path join current directory static and image. So basically the entire path is going to be your current directory plus the static folder plus the image and that is going to be the entire image path. Um, file path equals database.path. So this is for the database and that's where we're going to connect to the database. Connection equals SQLite connect to the, the, the database. Cursor is the cursor and then we're going to do a SQL statement. For, so for the SQL statement it's going to do select all from image table where image name equals image. Right, so image is the value. We're processing through this list. Image is the current value. And so we're gonna do a select statement based off of that image to see if anything shows up. Uh, cursor execute, uh, record equals fetch all. So we're gonna fetch all the values that might have that image name in it. We're gonna commit and we're gonna close. Basically, if not record, so if no record comes back, then response equals image process image path. So basically what this means here is we are going to go to the image process function and we're going to send the image path. So this image path up here, so basically we're sending the entire path to the picture and we're going to be sending it to the image process function. We're then going to scroll up here to the image process function and this is where we interact with OpenAI's Vision API. It's pretty simple. Uh, so here's the function, image process. So the image path is coming through. So the entire uh, image path is coming through. Uh, image query equals, so I have three queries that I care about. So this is a list. You can see by the comma separation here. So the index zero of the query list. Provide a caption for this image in fewer than 10 words. That's an important thing to do with OpenAI. <laughs> Tell it how many, you know, I want up to this many words. Provide 10 tags for this image in a CSV format. So again, if you're gonna ask for something like tags, make sure you say something like CSV format so it knows what format to give it in. And then provide a description for this image. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna loop through, it's gonna give us a caption, it's gonna give us tags, and then it's gonna give us a description. Base64 image. So again, we need the base64 image, not simply the file. So we're gonna do encode image, the image path. So that image path that we sent, we're gonna send that value to the encode image function. The encode image function is then going to return a base64 encoded image. So base64 underscore image is now that base64 image. Response list equals nothing. So basically we're gonna get a list, I want a list of responses back. So we're creating that list first. We're setting it to nothing. For query in image query. So for this, then this, then this. Uh, basically here, it's a lot of copy and paste from OpenAI. Headers equal content type, application JSON, authorization bearer. This is where your API key goes. Um, payload equals, so here's where you say the model. So as I'm doing this, again, it's still in preview version. So GPT for vision preview, depending on when you're watching this, this may be slightly different. So go, go take a look at what it says. Uh, role user, content um, text, and then text or type text, and here's the query. So this is where we put the query in. And so the query is each one of these, you know, image query. So, you know, we're doing the for query. So we're gonna say provide a caption. So provide a caption for this image, uh, image URL, URL, and this is where we give the base64 image here. 
So we do an F string here, and we put in the base 64 value here, and then we send this up with a max of 300 tokens. Response equals request.post, open AI, V1, chat completion, headers equals headers, JSON equals payload. Again, this is basically just copy and paste from the open AI vision API. Response equals the response as JSON, so the, J the, the response comes back, then I want the value as JSON. Response equals response, choices, zero, message, content. So basically, you're going to get this whole big JSON response back from OpenAI's Vision API, and you don't want most of it. All you really want is a con basically all you want is the answer. The answer is content. So to get to content, you have to do response, choices, zero, message, content to get to content. And then we're going to do response underscore list, right? So that list that we created append this response value that came back. So when the image comes in, and, it, it, and we're going to go through that query list, it'll say, give me a caption. That caption, once we come all the way through, it's going to take the caption and it will append it to a, black, a blank list. So that will go to index zero. And then we're going to ask for the tags. Then it's going to append to the list. The next index in that list is going to be one. And then it's going to say for a description, the next index in that list is going to be two. And then we're going to return the entire list, right? So basically the image goes up and then we get the, the, the caption, the tags, and the description. Then we're going to come down, back down here uh, to the image, right? So response equals image process. So this is where we, res we, we process the image. And then the response that we're going to get back is that list. That response at index zero uh, is going to be caption. At index one, it's going to be tags. At index two, it's going to be description. Um, Database.db insert image and response. So basically from here, we're then going to insert into the database uh, the image name and the response that we got. If we then scroll back up to our database, uh, we're gonna go here, we're gonna go to select, and then here we're going to go to insert. So file path equals the database path. So that's the path to the database. We're gonna do the connection, we're gonna do the cursor. SQL statement. So the SQL statement is going to do insert into image table, image name, caption, tag, description, values, question mark, question mark, question mark, and question mark, right? And so when we do the DB insert, the image comes in and the query comes in. I do this little comment here. Uh, so basically for the caption, so cursor execute SQL. So the SQL statement is going to execute, then image. So the image name, right, that's going to be the first value. And then uh, caption is going to come in as query zero. And then tag is going to come in as query one. And then description is going to come in as query two. So that's going to be the image name, then the caption, then the tags, and then the description. And that's going to get inserted uh, into the database. And then we're going to commit, and then we're going to close. Because if you don't commit with SQLite, it doesn't stick around. Right? Then we're going to do print added image, next line, what the response value was. Else, if it's already in the database, it's simply going to print already in the database. So this is how we go through. Basically, we have a static folder, uh, you know, within, within the, the folder that this project resides. There's a static folder. In there is all of the images. The script will go through. It'll basically take every file that's in that folder. It will put that into a list. It'll scan through. It'll look for any files that have PNG in them. Any files that have PNG in them, it will then go through. It will determine whether or not they're already in the database. If they are, it'll get skipped. If not, it'll do go through this whole processing routine and it will insert into the database. So that is how that works. So now that you understand how to process the images, let's just take a look at how you go through and you create that, that gallery using the Bottle uh, web app framework. Uh, so uh, from Bottle, uh, import, route, run, and static file. So static file isn't something we've used up until this point because generally it doesn't matter. Normally we're interacting with text, we're interacting with database information, and so with that, you don't have to worry about static files. Static files are CSV. CSS, uh, 
CSS files, uh, they're image files, they're that type of thing that basically your web application is going to be sending to the end user. So again, movies or audio files or pictures, you know, CSS, that type of stuff. We haven't dealt with that up until now. So, but for, for now, we're gonna be doing bottle, import route, run and static file, import SQLite 3, because we need the database and import OS. Uh, and then basically, this is pretty simple. Here, up here, we're going to have a route that we haven't seen before. So at route slash static slash file name uh, colon path. So what this is going to be is this is going to be a route for any files that are in the static folder. You have to do this or bottle will not actually present uh, the, your, your files, your static files uh, to the end user. You'll just get a whole bunch of X's on your gallery, right? And we take a look at this. Uh, basically what happens here is we define a server underscore static, the file name. So you're gonna be sending the file name. Root path equals OS, uh, OS dot path dot join, OS dot path dot directory name file and static. So basically it joins where the current, where the folder that the current file is in, it joins that folder with static. So that's where the static folder is gonna be. And then we're gonna return static file function. This is a built-in function with the file name and a root equals the root path. So basically, this is how Bottle uh, is able to send the path for the image or any other static file to the, the web browser or whatnot. You're gonna see that again in a second. Uh, we have the database <clears throat> uh, class like we've had in the past, uh, path. We have the create database. If it hasn't been created, we have select because we need to select. Uh, we still have insert in here just because it's copied and pasted to be honest with you. Uh, we're gonna minimize that and then we are going to go. We have the index page. We'll look at that in a second. So when you go to this website, this is the index page that'll be shown. And then here we have the database uh, dot create. So the database class dot db create function. So basically it'll initially run through this script It'll get here, it'll run the db create function. Basically, if the table does not exist, it auto creates the table. If it already exists, it won't do anything else. Down here is where we have the run. So run host equals 0.0.0.0. .0, .0. So when I run this, it'll basically run the web application on any IP address that I have. I'm using port 80. Again, I'm using a MacBook Pro, so it's very easy to use port 80. This is the standard HTTP port. If you're using Linux or something else, you may have to use port 8080. What that means is you would do 127.0.0.1 colon 8080. So since 80 is the default port, you can simply do 127.0.0.1, which is the loopback address, and you don't have to put anything else in because it defaults to 80. If you are going to use port 8080, which you may have to, then it would be 127.0.0.1, colon 8080 and that will drop you into this web app uh, this this bottle web application and if you want to figure out how to run port 80 and whatever operating system you have that's what google is for uh and then we have debug equals true because again this is in our own testing environment so if there are problems i want it to tell me what the hell the problem is uh then we're going to go here to the index right so basically we have the route so at route root Right, so the slash is root. So at 127.0.0.1, which is the loopback address, or whatever my external IP address is, right, whichever one, then we're going to run this particular uh, function. So define index as the function colon record equals database dot db select. So the database class, the db select function. So if we come up here to the database class. Basically, we can go to the db select function and basically select all from image table order by ID descending. So this is going to select um, everything from the image table. So all columns from the image table, it is going to order it by the ID descending. So the newest will be on top, oldest will be on the bottom. And then basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna do record, record equals fetch all. So when we run the SQL statement, we don't wanna fetch one. You have, the, you have the ability to fetch one or fetch all. I wanna fetch all records from this query. And then I'm going to return all the records from this query so that we can create a nice little gallery. Here, uh, let's see here. So select page equals nothing. So we're gonna have a page uh, variable value and we're gonna start out as blank and then we're gonna build on it. 
for X in record. So these records that came back, right, record is all the records. So basically we're going to step through it with a for X loop. For X, so basically for every record in record. Image path equals uh, F uh, dot slash static. So the static uh, file uh, with the image name. So X0, so if you look at the database, if you look at the database, X0 will be the ID. X1 will be the image name. X2 will be the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the caption. X3 will be the, um, oh, what is it? It will be the uh, tags. And X4 will be the description. So basically this, the image path, is going to be into the static folder with the image name. Page is going to equal... We use the F string, so page, whatever's come before. So the first time we loop through, it'll be blank. Then we're going to do a, do a line, so HR is a line. We're going to create a, a flex box with CSS. Then we're going to do image style equals width 400 pixels, height auto, SRC image path. So this image path right here, right, is where we're going to do it. Uh, div, then we're going to do strong X2. Uh, so this will be the, uh, the caption. Uh, line x3, this is where the tags will be, x4, that'll be where the description is, and then we are going to return the entire page. And basically, so when this runs, that is where you then get this, right? So here's the image coming from that static folder. Here is the caption, here are the tags, here's the description. And then it goes to the next, and then it goes to the next, and it goes to the next, and it goes to the next, and it builds all of it up. And, uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, the newest thing that we have here uh, today, again, is this whole static. We haven't dealt with static um, files before. I'm probably going to do a class with bottle and static files. Static files are a bit of a pain in the ass with uh, Python uh, web frameworks. But, as they say, they're a pain in the ass that you have to deal with. The main thing to understand here is that you have to create a route to that static, right? So if you don't have a route to static, then basically Bottle doesn't know what to do with static, right? Everything in one of these web app frameworks is about, about routes. So the route for root, so when you go to the root, this is what should happen. So when you do image path and you put in static, right, you need this static route up here to tell bottle what the hell static actually means where static is and basically what to return uh, but we'll probably have more of a class on that later but this is kind of just an idea of how this gallery works so there you go now you know how to use open ai's vision ai to process images and then how to create a basic little uh, image web app uh, once that information has been put into the database or or <laughs> you just woke up and you're like oh is it over oh crap <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Again, it's one of those things. Like when, you, when you're able to play with this stuff, it's really cool and it's really fun. Uh, you know, getting to the point when you know, you know enough about how to play with this stuff, it can be a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, but I'm trying to explain all this stuff to you in this long form content. Again, so you really understand how the, how the architecture works, how you understand how the code works, how you understand all, how all of this kind of stuff fits into systems, and that you realize you can build all of this kind of thing on your own. Again, I was I was going to build like more more functionality into this web app. Like I was going to build a search component and I was going to build a way that you could click on a tag and then it would show you every other picture that has only that you know basically has that tag in it. The problem is is then that, that gets even more complicated and will probably get even more confusing. So I left it about this simple, but that's the kind of thing that I want you to think about that you could could add to this, right? So you could take this code and then you could figure out how would you make it so if that these 
ind the individual tags are Git links so that if you clicked on one individual tag, it would then show you every other image with that particular tag in it. How would you create a little search text box up here? So if you're looking for something like somebody's ponytail, like do they have a, uh, a low ponytail? We don't want no high ponytails around here. We want low ponytails, right? If you're like, I want all the images with a low ponytail, could you figure out how to make a little search box so you could plug in low ponytail and it would only show images where low ponytails in the description or tags or whatever else, right? This is the kind of thing that I want you thinking about. It's not simply that you understand what a function is. It's not simply that you understand what a class is or a variable value or whatever else. The point of all of this is that you can build something, hopefully, hopefully with a value for somebody else. Um, one of the things to think about, like when I had employees, uh, the standard metric back in the day for employee salary was an employee salary for for a line for an employee that's bringing profit to the company, actually bringing money to the company. Basically, their salary should be 25% of however much revenue that they bring in. So if you bring in $400,000 of revenue to the company every year, you should earn $100,000. <laughs> if you bring in $40,000 of revenue to the company every year, your salary should be $10,000. And there's a reason for that when you look at facilities costs and taxes and insurance and then support service. So the receptionist and the accountant and all the other support employees that don't bring any revenue to the company, they have to get paid too, right? So that's one of the things to be thinking about when you're going out there to sell services is however much money you want to earn, quadruple that. And that's the value your solution has to provide, uh, again, to the executive or to the organization or whatever else. And so that's why you need to go and you need to figure out, you know, what, what can you build with these new technologies to provide that value of service uh, to your clients or to your boss? And so that's, that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to show you today. And again, I think that's one of the interesting things with uh, like this vision software is, again, how, how many companies nowadays have thousands of pictures, thousands, like literally thousands of pictures. And again, you have your marketing department, you have your PR department, you maybe have the softball team or whatever. All these people may have images somewhere. So simply you creating a system where you, you create one centralized uh, platform for the images uh, for your company. Then you run through and you do this taxonomy. So basically you automatically do this kind of tags and caption and that type of thing. That can be very valuable in the, valuable in the future. Again, from the marketing department or whatever else. We're like, oh, who, who, who's going to buy our, our, our MacBook skin? Somebody's like, you know, you know who's going to buy? Somebody in a cafe with a low ponytail. <laughs> we need to market to the low ponytail. And so they can go through it. Like, give, give us all the pictures. And you know, the pictures. And like, okay. That is, that is the face of our marketing campaign. <laughs> Don't hate me. I owe you a beer. <laughs> Gotta give him a beer after this, right? But those are some of the kinds of things to consider. And the other thing to be considering too, again, we talk about this whole architecture thing. Once again, how you're going to divide, uh, uh, divide processing, you know, processing the images or whatever else versus displaying. Again, so we, here we have one script that displays the gallery, and then we have a different script that actually do the, does the processing. And the nice part there is, again, if I fed it 10,000 images, again, 10,000 images is going to take a darn long time. But basically every time it adds to the database, that will now be available for this web app right? As it's added. So basically this, this, the web app can be used as the files are being added to the database and you're not going to see any latency or lag, or at least you shouldn't uh, on this web app. So again, these are some of the things uh, to be considering. And, uh, you know, with machine vision, we're going to do a couple more projects with machine vision because I, again, I think this is really interesting, especially from open AI, where with these prompts, you, you can have very, very open-ended, free-form prompts, and frankly, a way that you don't see with a lot of other computer vision solutions. Again, other computer vision solutions are amazing, but they give you what they give you. It's like, here's what you get. It'll be, you know, great accuracy, but, right? The cool part about this is, again, you can just simply make the prompt from tags to description to is there a whatever, you know, whatever you want in there. Um, so I think that's great. Uh, the final thing uh, on here is like the warning warning, I suppose. 
Do be careful with price. Um, again, with price with OpenAI always gets obfuscated. It's always kind of just difficult to determine how much things cost. As far as I can tell, far as I can tell, each request costs approximately a penny. So not, not all of this costs a penny. So to get a caption, probably costs you about a penny. To get the tags, probably costs you about a penny. To get the description, probably costs you about a penny. So to process this image for these three different items costs about three cents, three pennies. So <clears throat> again, depending on what your budget is, you then may want to consider. Again, three pennies for 30 images is 90 cents. You know, three pennies for 10,000 images starts to give you, get a bit of, get to be a bit of money. Also remember that, again, we're talking about things like price is important to think about caching mechanisms. So caching mechanisms is where you store the results that come back. You do not want a system that will reprocess these images every time somebody makes a query. Every time somebody makes a search, you don't want a thousand images going to open AI again to be processed. Basically, when somebody makes a search or makes a request, whatever responses come back from open AI, you want those stored locally. So if somebody makes the exact same request again, or again, you're using it in something like an image gallery, you can just pull from that local database at no cost versus again, paying a penny for every request that you make with open AI. Again, one of those things to be thinking about from an architecture standpoint. And, uh, and yeah. I think that's about all I gotta say. Uh, so there you go. Uh, as uh, as always, I enjoyed uh, teaching this particular class. I do like teaching real tech education. I swear, just doesn't pay. Just doesn't pay. Donor box link uh, down below if you've seen it. Um, but anyways, I do enjoy doing this. Uh, and as always, I look forward to seeing you at the next class.